When I walk through Beirut, it surely will be a moment where I will remember how the explosion happened. I always have this ache in my heart that I don't think is ever going to go away. It's normal, it's a memory that is stuck. My name is Shana Farjalla. I'm 20 years old. I'm a third year university student. I'm doing events and hospitality. And uh, since the explosion, I am rebuilding the city. My day starts mostly at 8 a.m. when I arrive at Quarantina for Afrojois. And I just start taking, uh, grabbing the tasks from the owners and the engineers. And I also start putting my safety, which is my mask, my, uh, my cask, everything that has to do with, uh, with safety. -ness. I also take my talkie walkie just to start communicating with the team leaders. And I see how I can actually divide the volunteers together and for us to start the work. So what's going to happen right now is that you see the boxes of cement, yes. the bags. So our job is literally to carry them, okay? My role is a team leader. What I actually do is I lead volunteers regarding the tasks that we actually have to do. With four people, ten people are going to carry a small sack, we're going to finish it in one or two hours. We work as a team. We have architects and engineers that are responsible for the planning of the building, how they're going to do the interior, the exterior and everything. And then they come and communicate it to us, the team leaders, in order for us to know exactly which tasks we're supposed to give them to the volunteers that are here to help. So mostly we are the little hands of the workers. We actually um, take stuff out of the way in order for them to work. One of the main challenges that we're facing is uh, the weather. Uh, we're expecting a lot of uh, heavy rain in the upcoming weeks. Uh, also, uh, we're facing the lack of volunteers these days uh, due to uh, people going back to universities, to school, uh, to, uh, to work, etc. Uh, as well, as you know, uh, we have COVID uh, pandemic on our hands and we're trying to take all the necessary precautions to prevent it from spreading. Ralph, Ralph. Yes, sir. Ready, ready? We actually have a ritual. It's about having lunch together. This ritual is actually very important for me because it's about gathering all of us together as volunteers, as a team. And also to know that even though there have been so many damages during the explosion, we are creating um, a love, of friendship, all of us together, a gathering where we can just communicate about everything, about our feelings, and it's actually just beautiful. I try to come every single day, depending on my schedule at university. So it's either I come from 8 in the morning till 4 p.m., or whenever I have my courses online, I have to come at 2 p.m. I just organize myself. I study during my weekend. I study directly when I come back from Afrojois. Of course, sometimes working and having these tasks to do every single day could be very tiring, very exhausting. But this is a task that I have to do for my country, the country that I just love from the bottom of my heart and I just don't want to keep it aside. I don't, I don't want to say to myself, other people will do it. It's my time to rebuild. It's my time to push the other generations to come and help. Before the explosion, I had hobbies like dancing, singing, wakeboarding, but I had to stop these hobbies because for me, other things were more important, which is the rebuilding. And why is it more, why was it more important for me? It's because these hobbies that I have, they can happen later. I can do them anytime I want, but the rebuilding was something that was necessary. It was super, super important. This event should never be forgotten. 
The message I would like to give is just to know that even though we went through this explosion, even though we went through these damages, Beirut is going to rise again. Beirut has always risen.